you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. It turns out that we can break this question up into two separate parts. In part one, there is the inelastic collision between the bullet and the ball, and because it's a collision, we can conserve momentum. And then in part two, the ball and the bullet will rise up to their maximum height, and in that case, we can conserve energy. So let's begin with part one, the inelastic collision. So here's the picture of the collision, and we call it an inelastic collision because the bullet and the other on the on the on the on the on the on the on the. So here we have the bullet whose mass is lowercase m and who has an initial velocity fired upward at the baseball whose mass is capital M, and then they become embedded in each other. In fact, that's why it's called an inelastic collision is because they become stuck in each other. And so we can conserve momentum. We have the initial momentum of the bullet. The initial momentum of the baseball is zero because it's at rest. And then the final momentum is on the other side of the equation. We can cancel out the plus zero and then divide both sides of the equation by the mass term. And that way we're going to be able to isolate the final velocity of the objects. And then we can actually plug in all the known values. We know the mass of the bullet, the lowercase m, was given to us. The mass of the baseball, or uppercase m, was also given to us. And then the initial velocity of the bullet was stated. And when you crunch down that number, you should get approximately 33.3 meters per second. So that's going to be the final velocity of the bullet and baseball as they are launched upward into the sky. Now in part two, the objects are going to rise to their maximum height, and we can conserve energy in order to find how high they rise. Now to conserve energy, we have to know which types of energy are present. Because initially they are moving as they are launched off the ground, we certainly know there will be some kinetic energy. But because they're launched at ground level, there will be no gravitational potential energy. On the other hand, once they rise up to their maximum height, their final velocity becomes zero, and therefore there is no kinetic energy. But because they are now off of the ground, they will definitely have gravitational potential energy. Now, through the conservation of energy, we can set the final energy equal to the initial energy. We recall from previous experience that the kinetic energy can be written as one half times the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity squared. And then the gravitational potential energy is the mass of the object times g times the height to which the object has risen. But because mass appears on both sides of the equation, we can actually eliminate it and simplify it. And then indeed, to solve for the height, we can just divide both sides of the equation by g. Now we'll notice that the initial velocity of the objects as they are launched off the ground was the final velocity from part one of the question, which we found to be 33.3 meters per second. So that's what we can plug in for the initial velocity here. And then g, of course, is 9.8. And when you crunch this quantity down on your calculator, you should get approximately 57 meters. And that will represent the height to which the objects ascend. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.